to maximize efficiency in order to keep up with their heavy dredge load. The dredge will work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's something totally different about working on the water, whether it be at sea, coastal waters, Great Lakes, Western Rivers, there's always something different. The Mississippi and its system are totally different from the other places because it's a life flow going down through the center of the continent and the current is always flowing, always renewing itself. When the Thompson was completed back in 1937, it was designed to function as its own self-contained, self-supporting community. Prior to that, crews lived in a floating barge called the Quarters Boat, anchored near the dredging site. The crew life is pretty interesting. Um, we're stationed on board the dredge, we quarter there and eat there. So the community there is quite tightly knit. It's not for everybody, it takes a lot to get used to. You live with every, the guys that you work with, you live with them, you eat, sleep, you know, your activities outside of work and off duty are you know, generally with the guys that you work with. Work shifts varied throughout the years depending on the workload, seven and seven, with seven 12-hour days on the river and seven days at home, or five and two, with five eight-hour days and two days off or in an earlier era when crew members had a single free day and then headed back to the boat for a week of battling the river. In 86, they called the, they were starting a 7-7 schedule up and they needed hands. I think they hired 10 or 15 of us that year. I've been on the Thompson uh, ever since I was, came on as a deckhand. It worked my way up through the ranks, uh, deckhand, equipment operator, boat operator, Temporary second mate, then a first mate's permit position, uh, and then captain's job. Ilona and I work seven on and seven off. We um, are opposites on opposite sides. So I work seven 12 hour days, and when I go home, she comes on for seven 12 hour days. Depending on what um, area we are in, these guys also flip on to seven and seven, but for the most part, they work eight hour days, five days a week, weekends off. Like many small communities, life revolved around work, with friends and family members working side by side. I was pretty young, and my brother worked on the dredge here first, and I was just a kid, and I worked around the river all the time. I lived around the river, and I well, had nothing else to do, and I, he got me on here, he said, so I come down, and they hired me. It was 41, it's a long time ago, and 50 cents an hour. First time I was in the boatyard, I was probably 14, 15 years old. My dad was an assistant engineer on the Thompson for 26 years, just retired, and he'd bring us on when I was just a teenager. It was different, and it was, it was actually, at, that, at my age at that time, coming on here, it was something I'd never experienced before. It smelled like diesel fuel. <laughs> Everything smelled like diesel. But just a bunch of the camaraderie of the guys that he worked with, it was pretty cool when I was 14, 15, you know, and, Never imagined that I'd work on here. It was on October 30th of 1996 that the Thompson, while in tow at the head of Lake Pepin, was caught in one of the worst storms ever experienced with the dredge. With very little warning, winds exceeding 50 miles an hour battered the dredge for 36 hours, and it lay helpless along the right shoreline. Waves exceeding six feet hit the pipeline pontoons, set 25 of them loose and sank a number of them, Several commercial tows sheltered the dredge by pulling alongside and protecting it from worse damage. I think one person described it as a lifetime of fun and a few moments of sheer terror. The weather is a big uh, impact on us. We have to work through rain, high winds, and when situations like that occur, we have to stand by the equipment, stay on our station so that um, there isn't any damage. You get caught up in the wind, you have to play the wind and the curtain. current. Uh, this big vessel is like a sailboat when, it, when the wind's blowing. When you're out dredging and you've got all your pontoon line out and the storm has come up and, uh, and it's not something that you can just all go inside, you got to be out uh, holding your pontoon line so that it doesn't, the wind doesn't blow it and, and uh, bust it all up. Life on board the Thompson and the work meant an extremely tight community and the work and close living quarters brought its own traditions. We have a tradition on there where we give a guy his swim trunks when he falls in and I had to sign my name on him and 
keep them in my room for that period of time until the next soul <laughs> fell in. Usually during the day, the men come up or when their break is and have a cup of coffee or, or chit chat a little bit. This is really a, its own little society. You know, you know, when you live together and eat together and sleep together, and, and uh, some of us go to church together, some of us party together, you get to know everybody pretty intimately. The life and traditions formed on the Thompson have inevitably flowed into the community where it docks. Dredge Thompson's always been a part of my life. Uh, not even just in a work situation, but uh, because my dad worked on it. And uh, uh, when I was growing up uh, as a young boy and living in Fountain City, uh, would always know when the dredge was about to pass and would wait to listen for its engine signature uh, as they were coming up or downstream and I could hear that maybe a mile away so I knew it was the dredge William E. Thompson. They've been good jobs and uh, lots of local people have worked uh, and, and stayed in the area, bought homes, Children were in school here, so all around it was it was good for the community. It kept, uh, it's obviously been the uh, biggest employer the city's ever had, and, uh, and it's just kept people, you know, part of the culture of the city. When I worked down here, it, it was probably one of the most romantic jobs I ever had, uh, working a midnight shift with a full moon, riding a, a, a tender, sitting up on the tenders. It, it was just a, a wonderful experience. Is the Midwest or the nation willing to accept either the demise of the Mississippi River's ecosystem or the loss of navigation? Running from Lake Itasca to the Gulf of Mexico, it's the biggest piece of nature in the central United States. For too long, it's been suffering from our focus on what we can extract from it. The Upper Mississippi is defined by the visions that made it a navigation channel rather than its own natural character. Yet today, popular grassroots support for the river is behind protecting its scenic and ecological qualities. For over 67 years, the dredge William A. Thompson has lived a useful life. And over those years, she has dredged 125 million cubic yards of sand from the channel. I've been told that if you piled up the sand, it'd be equal in size to 40 of the biggest pyramids. She's a fine and magnificent boat, and she has done much to keep the upper Mississippi River open for commercial navigation. Now the dredge William A. Thompson is ready to join many of the old crew members in retirement. She'll be replaced by the dredge Getz, a modern state-of-the-art dredge, which is the same thing said about the Thompson in 1937. The Dredge William A. Thompson will no longer head out in the river every day, but it will still go to work. It is being turned into a museum and a river education center in Winona, Minnesota. And the new dredge will continue the Thompson's work, keeping the channel open for commercial and pleasure craft, while maintaining the focus on environmental maintenance and restoration. It's, it's always different. Every morning when you get up and you go outside and have your coffee, everything's different. The weather, the current, the the flow of water, I mean, it's, it's interesting. There's always something different to see. There's going to be a little bit of sadness, but there's also some excitement about this walking off of here. It's walking onto a new piece of equipment and another challenge. Step on board the William Thompson, it's like stepping back in time. Back to 1937 when no one could spare a dime. Louise cracked the champagne bottle on a sleek new wrought iron hull. The big dredge cleared the ways of Dravo, it was named for her grandpa. See the ghost of Captain Henning high up in the pilot house. Standing there betwixt the levers as he brings the big boat round Down the Allegheny River, out onto the Ohio Then up the Mississippi to her Fountain City home Now 
Father Thompson is dredging up memories of our days on the river gone by. A lot of good people have gone on, that many more have come along. We all bid the William Thompson goodbye. We were working in the boatyard then for 50 cents an hour, pulling barges up onto the ways with horse teams used for power. We were caulkers, we were painters, we were engineers. We went up to the Golden Frog when the sun went down for beer. But the Thompson was for working, so us boys we made up tow. One anchor barge, one oil barge, and pontoon set to go. Winona, Trempolo, Dresback, and Genoa locks we made. Then below the town of Lansing, we got that big pipe laid. We got that cutter headed turning, kept it going all this time. Chewing up the bottom, spitting it down through the line. We've been everywhere on this old boat, the Missouri and St. Croix. From St. Paul to St. Louis, up and down the Illinois. Now the Thompson is dredging up memories of our days on the river gone by. A lot of good people have gone on, that many more have come along, and we all bid the William Thompson goodbye. We all bid the William Thompson goodbye.